Hey there Bleep Jeebers, it's Tyler. This week we're working on Project Tetanus. This is going to be part two of our front axle swap. I'm going to show you how to install this Iron Rock Off-Road Dana 30 axle truss and uh, add some serious beef to your Dana 30. We begin the install by removing the differential cover and draining the gear oil. You're going to have to remove your carrier so that you can get out the axle seals. The axle seals will be damaged in the heat of welding, so you're going to have to replace them. When you remove your bearing caps, you need to make sure they go back in exactly as they came out. So here I'm marking them so that I can get them in the correct orientation. What I later discovered is that these are already marked from the factory with a sideways letter Y and then a, a right side up letter Y right here in this location on the housing. But regardless, make sure you can get them back in exactly as they came out. So now I'll remove the bearing caps. Now is an excellent time to re-gear your axle, but if you're not going to re-gear your axle, pry out your carrier assembly and as you do that, make sure that you don't lose track of the bearing caps. They need to, these bearing races need to stay with the same bearing. So keep this very clean, set it aside. And now you can set to work cutting the bracketry off the axle. You need to cut off everything except the lower control arm mounts and don't cut off the upper control arm mount that is molded into the pumpkin, that's cast into the pumpkin. Now I opted to go with uh, Iron Rock Off-Road's lower control arm mounts because these ones were bent anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off everything except that upper control arm mount that's cast into the pumpkin. Take your time, be thorough, clean all this off. You need to have a, a, a good clean housing for a, a good bond on the weld. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove my pinion. You don't really need to do this unless you've got a leaking pinion seal or, or you're re-gearing. I'm going to re-gear, so I'm going to go ahead and pull it now. And once I get that pinion out, then I'm going to remove the axle seals. As I said, they're going to be damaged from the heat of welding this truss on, so you need to plan on replacing them. I'm just using a piece of conduit to reach up in there and knock these out. Once they're out, I'm going to set to work to clean the axle housing. I'm being extremely thorough to clean out the inside of the axle tubes because I'm also installing Iron Rock Off-Road's inner axle sleeve kit. I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. That'll be another video. But here I'm drilling the hole so that I can button weld the sleeves in place. I really highly recommend you do this mod at the same time. And I'll explain why in, in that video. So stay tuned for that. So before I start to install the axle truss, I need to check my tubes for straightness. I'm doing this with an angle finder. You measure all along both lengths of the axle tubes. If you get more than a quarter degree of variance, then you need to straighten the housing or choose a different housing. Now you can see I'm doing it 90 degrees of the first measurement. And as long as these angles all look good, we can get to the install. So we start by welding the axle tubes to the center housing. Now the center housing is cast. It needs to be heated to about 425 degrees and then you want to weld about an inch and a half then turn the tube 180 degrees, weld an inch and a half and move in this way all the way around the tube until you've got it all the way welded. Now I'm going to go ahead and heat up the other side checking it you're up to 425 degrees, go ahead and do the same thing on the driver's side. Now you want this to cool very slowly, so I've wrapped this in a blanket and I left it for several hours to cool. Once it's cooled, you want to mount the truss so that it's three quarters of an inch from the mounting surface of the diff cover. Now just go ahead and spot weld it in several spots to make sure it stays in place. 
once you've got it spot welded, then you can begin the process of actually welding it to the housing. Now you need to take your time doing this. Weld about two inches, and then rotate the housing, weld a couple more inches, let the housing cool. You wanna get good penetration, but you wanna heat the housing as little as possible so that you don't get undue warping. And you can see I did this over several hours. Now that we've got the truss installed, it's time to mount up the track bar mount here. It's got these nice tabs that index with the truss so that you get it in the right spot. Just tack it in, check it for straightness, and then go ahead and burn it in for good. These parts all fit together really well. I was really impressed with the quality of them and how everything just, just fit well. It's well designed. I'm very happy with this kit. It's a very complete kit. And once you've got that burned in, now it's time to weld in the sway bar link for the passenger side. And just make sure it's straight. I'm gonna go ahead and button weld it. It's also got a nice little notch that it indexes into the truss with, so it's almost impossible to get it in the wrong place. Once you've got these burned in, then we're gonna move on to the housing ends. Now included in this kit are these C brackets, or these reinforcements for the knuckle. You attack them in several spots. Once you got them tacked in place, you wanna put your outer knuckle back on and you see I've mounted up the brake caliper to the knuckle because I want to make sure that brake caliper is not going to interfere during steering and smack into that gusset. Once you're happy with the location of that gusset, you can go ahead and burn it in. You don't have to preheat these C's to 425, but you do want to minimize the amount of heat you put into these. So tack them in place and then weld a little bit, get good penetration, but try not to overheat it any more than you absolutely have to. Weld about an inch and a half to two inches at a time and move from side to side so that you don't get too much heat. And then once you've got these burned in all the way, uh, you wanna go ahead and let them cool as slowly as possible, just like you did the center section, and that prevents cracking or crystallization of the cast ends. Take your time doing this. You can see I did this over a period of a, a few hours. You just got to be patient so that you don't warp your housing or, or crack it. Now there's a couple spots where I couldn't get to the outside of these gussets because of the truss, so I went ahead and welded them on the inside just to make sure I had a good weld bead all the way around the entire perimeter of that gusset. Now IRO also includes new spring mounts and spring retainers, much better than the factory. They also include uh, new shock mounts, and instead of using the old bar pin system, this is a much better stud here, and they include all of this hardware with the kit. As I mentioned before, I opted to install Iron Rock Off-Road's lower control arm mounts because mine were bent. And if you're going to go to the trouble of installing this truss, you might as well replace these too. The factory ones are so weak compared to these. But the neat feature about these is you can see how they're cut on an angle so that you don't have to try to guess what angle to weld them to the tube. They, uh, there's only one way they'll go on and it's, it way simplifies the installation. I was really impressed by that. They do need to angle towards the center, not towards the outside. Now I measured from the center section to the inside, and on the short side it was three quarters of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark and then set that aside. And I went to the long side, and on my housing it was 16 and a half inches to the inside of, of the control arm mount. You want to check these measurements on your own housing before you cut the brackets off, just to make sure there's not any variance. I'll go ahead and mark where this one will line up on the inside. I'm measuring to the inside because these are so much thicker than the factory ones. 
Now the factory lower control arm mounts are parallel to the spring buckets, so I decided to mount mine parallel to the spring buckets on the truss. So there I've used a bubble level to level the housing. And now if I level this lower control arm mount, it should be parallel to the spring bucket that's on the truss. So once I've got that level, I can go ahead and tack it in place. Check it again if I'm happy with that. Then I'll go ahead and move to the other side. So again, just using the bubble level, I've lined this up with the mark I made earlier. Tack it in place. Now these again, you wanna weld these a little bit at a time, move from side to side. Don't do too much heat in one place at one time because you can warp the housing. Take your time and do this right. The last option that I went for was this passenger side upper control arm mount. You don't have to buy this piece, but I wanted to use the factory location for the upper control arm mount. It's got a notch so it indexes into the truss. It's impossible to get it in the wrong place. To get the angle right, I just used a protractor, measured the angle of the factory one cast in the center section, perfectly matched that angle. Once I was happy with that, I went ahead and burned it in. <clears throat> I gotta tell you, to be honest, I don't like axle trusses. I've never liked them. I've never liked the way they looked until I saw this one on Iron Rock Off-Road's uh, website. I love the way it's designed. I love the look of it. And putting this kit together, I am super impressed with the quality of the parts, how complete the kit is. It's very well thought out. And it's really one of the most elegant axle trusses I've ever seen. It's just, it's beefy. <laughs> it's way beefy. And I'm way impressed. So I want to thank Brent and the folks at Iron Rock Off-Road for supporting Project Tetanus. And I will see you guys next week.